I need All right, to- well, <laughs> now, sorry about that, Kiana, we will get to your question. What is your favorite style to do? I think you did say uh, sewing. Oh, that is the same as extensions, correct? It's a form of extensions, yes. Okay, okay. There's so many forms. Sewing is your favorite. So I guess, um, well, what type of extensions do you do? I do sew-ins, I do micro links, I do clip-ins, I do wigs, I do various hair pieces, ponytails, braids are a form of extension if you're adding the hair in. Anything where you add hair in is a form of extension. So I do every form of extensions. The um, one, there's two forms of extensions that I do the least. And um, that is tape-in extensions and fusion, hair fusions. You're going to have to expound a little bit on that. Um, right now, we, we're going to thank Kiana for her her sweet feedback. It says, love her. She helped me grow my perm without having to do a big chop, and my hair is now natural, healthy, and long. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. She has be- a beautiful head of hair. Thank you, Kiana. Well, all right, so yeah, you're gonna you're definitely gonna have to expound on the um on that, and I guess you okay. can even go into maintenance on well, on extensions let me as well. On that. I'm so glad she said that because when Kiana started coming to me, she wanted to grow out her hair, but she did not want to do the big chop. So what we did was we did extensions, we did sew-ins for for years, and it really grew her hair out, and that's what prevented her from having to do the big chop. Because with the, the sew-ins, your hair is braided up underneath. And braids mm-hmm. are a protective style that encourage and promote hair growth. So her hair was growing underneath her extensions. So I braid the hair up. I sew the hair on. And she actually would leave a little hair out. And um, she would maintain that in-between appointments. But she would come in for maintenance. And so she wouldn't put too much heat or anything on her hair. and so. All of her hair grew, even the hair that was left out. Um, And every time she would come, I would clip her ends, whatever was damaged. Because when you're going from being relaxed to being natural, that relaxed hair is going to shed. It's going to break. You're going to have a lot of split ends. So that's why most people do the big chop. But if you have a hair care professional maintaining your hair for you and helping you out with that, then you won't have that issue. You don't necessarily have to do the big chop. But I understand why so many women do it. Um, Well, we didn't have to do that. All of my clients don't have to do that because I'm able to coach them and help them find a style to wear in the meantime so that they can transition from their hair being one way to being another way. And that's what we did to maintain her hair. And... um, I think we did sew-ins for maybe four years straight. And can you damage those? Can you damage sew-ins? Yeah, like not necessarily from the root, but like I don't know, could you get like potentially like split ends in them by not taking care of it? Yes, you can. Oh well, wow! Keep it in too long. If you keep it in too long, and then your hair gets tangled or matted, and then when you go to comb that hair out, you're gonna lose a lot of hair. And your hair is going to break wherever it was extremely matted or tangled. And so you're going to result in hair hair loss because of that. Um, if the braids are too tight or the sew-in is too tight, that can also cause you to um, lose hair. It can cause traction alopecia. So you can definitely damage your hair with the sew-in. So you want to be mindful of who you're going to, how informed they are on your hair texture, and the styles that you're wanting and um you definitely want to go to a professional to maintain it as well like i said i would she truly hate to, to be diagnosed with that excuse me i would truly hate to be diagnosed with that show up at, you with, know, show up at the barber or show show up at the uh you know the stylist um i'm sorry uh, sir we can't work on your hair you you here let's just here come on yeah, tra- what did you say? Traction alopecia? Traction alopecia. So Ooh, yeah, that's alopecia sound. due to your hair being too tight or too much tension on your hair. So it's not hereditary or anything like that. It just means that your hair is damaged from being over manipulated or being brushed. Well, over manipulation means being pulled too tight, 
with a brush or being braided too tight or being pulled up into a ponytail too tight and you're laying on that ponytail and that hair that's against that cotton, if you're not tying your hair down with satin and you're not sleeping on a satin pillowcase, you have your hair up, you sleep on that satin pillowcase and you're moving your head at night, you wake up and over time, this will thin out. So that's another reason why it's important to sleep with satin. Oh, wow. So, so, you have to okay. keep all, so you have to keep all this stuff in mind. Hmm. But, um, that's pretty interesting. Yes. I think that a male can get that from, from I think a barber a long time ago told me, uh, guys who, you know, are constantly wearing a do-rag all the time and they tie it too tight that they start losing hair where they tie it too tight. That, even from wearing hats. So guys that constantly wear baseball hats or whatever, if they're constantly wearing it and they, they make sure that that band or whatever is on, if it's on too tight, that part like around here, you'll start to lose hair right there. It happens on kids. It can happen on babies, kids, anybody. Anything that's huh. on your hair and it's, it's too tight can cause traction alopecia, which is just alopecia, but it's due to something you're doing. It's not hereditary oh. and there's no reason that you should have it other than something that you're doing. Wow. So that's definitely enlightening. So I guess for different hairstyles, I mean, for, not necessarily hairstyles, but for different, for, um, I guess different types of extensions, is there different maintenance? So you mentioned like micro links and tape and, you know, all this other stuff that I'm not familiar with, but is there different maintenance for all of that? Um, it is different maintenance for different, um, forms of extensions, but ultimately the basics of the maintenance for extensions is washing your hair every so often, making sure that your natural hair is protected underneath and um, consulting with a beauty professional to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when you're not in the salon. So mm -hmm. for sew-ins, you shouldn't wear a sew-in over eight weeks. I say eight weeks, but for sure, no longer than 10 weeks. Because after 10 weeks, you deal with tangling and matting. So your hair pretty much drags underneath. That's no good. You're going to lose hair. With micro links, they last up to six months. But you have to come in once every month at the max every two months to come in and get those micro links readjusted. So that way, I'm seeing the strands of your hair. I'm assessing whether or not it's too heavy on your hair if it's breaking off while you have that on, I'm using the right shampoo and conditioner to make sure that your hair is soft and moisturized while having those micro links in because that's very important with micro links as well as with sew-ins. It's important that your scalp underneath is, is clean and moisturized at the same time. Um, with tape extensions, you have to move those more frequently. It's not a very long lasting form of extensions. And it's my least favorite form of extensions because the tape can really pull at, pull at your hair. But it's- mm. So you can get alopecia from it. Traction alopecia. Well, yes and no. So it's not necessarily traction alopecia, but you will have hair loss because that tape turns into like a, a gummy type of glue on your hair and mm. you have to be very careful with the way you remove it and i know hairstylists out there they say you know it's a way for you to remove glue from your hair and it's not going to damage your hair but the more you do that you will damage your hair over time you can't keep right. gluing hair in your head and thinking that you're not gonna lose some hair so your hair yeah. will thin out over time so uh, tape extensions and fusions are my least favorite for that reason. Um, okay. With the fusions, they're very similar to micro links, except instead of attaching the hair with a, a micro bead, you're attaching the hair with glue or a carotene tip. So it's like you're using a, a hot gun, a hot glue gun, and you're putting that strand of hair that already has glue attached to it onto a nat your natural piece of hair and you're fusing them together and with heat so that the glue is now infused with your natural hair and the extension. And they also last six months on average. They're very similar 
two micro links, except instead of it being attached to your hair with a micro bead, it's attached to your hair with glue or a keratin tip, which is still glue. And with that, in order to remove, you have to remove it with a razor. And you have to make sure that you're razoring off the glue and not the natural hair. So it's a very long, tedious process that can still damage your hair. So fusions and tape extensions are my least favorite. I do them the least. And for those, all those reasons that I just listed, that is why. Okay. Uh, before, <clears throat> before we get to this, um, this, um, this other feedback, I guess I just have one more question about just th that whole entire thing. Okay. Would you say that, that the rubber bands, like actual rubber bands, not the scrunchy type, would it damage people's hair? Well, rubber bands can definitely damage your hair because the rubber attaches to your hair. And when you go to remove yeah. it, you usually have a few strands of hair or something like that. But mm -hmm. a good way to counter the rubber band from damaging your hair is to make sure your hair is moisturized. And what I like to do is I like to dip my um, dip my rubber bands in oil because oil okay. makes it slick. So it's when I'm when I'm placing it on, it's not pulling at your hair. And I also okay. recommend that when you take when you remove a rubber band before you remove a rubber band, you put oil on it. That way, when you go to remove it, it kind of slides off the hair. You still may have to unravel it, but it'll slide off your hair and it won't pull your hair with it. Okay. Well, thank you for that insight. And now we got another compliment. Shauna has been my hairstylist since 2014, and she never disappoints. Her attention to detail, detail, styling, expertise, and customer service can't be beat. She is definitely one of the best book today. Okay. And that definitely comes from Brittany Griffin. Okay. Uh, don't know if you saw this one, but... Um, it also says, not to mention, she also slays my son's braids. He, he says all the time, Mama Kaylee is the one, is the only one I'm letting touch my hair. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how he sounds, but hopefully that was a good impression. 